Uh, how's it going? I am Yoshi, and um, I have learned a crap ton about the Logitech wheels over the years, and I thought I'd make a quick video explaining some of the ins and outs that I've learned. Uh, first and foremost, the G920, G27, G25, G923, G920, all of that stuff, they all use the same uh, base motors. Um, they're not, there's a couple of different models on them, <clears throat> but basically every single wheel uses these same ones. So they've upgraded a couple of things software wise and maybe on the main board, but functionally they're all the same thing. So if they sell, if someone tells you the G920 feels better than uh, a G25, they either are working with an old worn out one or uh, they just, you know, seat of the pants, they, they just, it's all in their head. They feel like uh, it, it is or isn't better or worse. Generally, there's a couple of small upgrades you can do uh, to get a little bit more out of it. One of them is the cheap one, which is a power brick mod, which is you just pick up a power brick that has the same uh, plug style as the, the G series. Uh, I'll see if I can remember to put a link in the description for a $20 Amazon one. Uh, it doesn't make the wheel better, it simply makes it handle peak amperage better. So your regularly going through the motions won't uh, change, but on when the motors are getting 100% power, they'll, the wheel will spin faster towards that way. So it doesn't make it faster all around, just on peak load. And if you're going to do a motor upgrade, it's it's kind of a must just, just to get a little bit more power through it. Um, so to go over the general breakdown, uh, there's a couple of screws on the bottom, whole thing pops off. These are aftermarket ones, obviously. There's a couple of screws here, screws on the bottom, and this whole thing should come out with a couple of plugs. Uh, and this is generally what you're interested in. One of the issues that a lot of people have with this is... Uh, if you start hearing clunking, especially at full lock, what's happening is is the the bolts that hold this piece down on the bottom are uh, loose. It's these ones right here. So generally, if you tighten those up, this whole thing will go down, and that'll work better. The problem is, is this is your lock mechanism. This is actually what's physically sliding back and forth, and sometimes it'll get a little bit off kilter. Uh, the lube, by the way, yours won't look like this. I just added the lube because, you know, lube makes everything better. Uh, if you do disassemble it and put stuff back together, it's important to note that there is a spring right here that keeps tension on this whole piece. So make sure that goes back on appropriately. Uh, and that whenever you hear the clunk in a full lock, that's that clunk. Uh, for uh, general, this is but I wound up eventually frying on mine, so please be careful. Uh, this is the main board. I haven't been able to find replacements for these, uh, so you try not to fry these things. They're pretty delicate. These are the motor drivers up here, and there's a couple of plugs for like wheel buttons and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> all the buttons that come through your steering wheel come through the centerpiece here. Fuck me. Um, so when everything goes back together, uh, be careful. Uh, so, going over the new motors, these are the replacement motors that I put in. Uh, I'll link the description of what I used for these. I just found this on the internet through a bunch of forums and stuff, and you know how forums are. You don't really trust them until you run them and see what they work. So, they, even the guy I found in a forum, in theory, uh, said they would work, and I was the first person to try them out. Uh, they're since gone out of stock, so um, I'm trying. I'm not really good at searching these these uh, Chinese websites, but they sell specifications. These are actually, I think, in, in the forum post, it, it says that these were designed to run convenience store automatic opening and closing doors. So that's interesting, but uh, you know they'll, they'll take the abuse. Uh, so the general challenges of mounting it is when you take these off, uh, the factory mounting holes are three holes, and only two out of the three line up. Uh, you could theoretically drill another hole to get it through there. 
Um, but I did this setup for probably about six months, and this this is pretty pretty stout stuff. Encoder bit, which is this is the this is the the complicated piece. Uh, this one will not fit. So let's see if I can find. This is the original motor, and uh, this sits on top of it. And then you've got a cap, and you've got this rotor piece here, and all that sticks together. Uh, but if you notice, if I can get it right about there, uh, the holes line up correctly, and it has this little embossment right here. On the newer motor, uh, that embossment is very much not the same, and it kind of wiggles around. Uh, so in theory, you can probably re-drill the holes. They don't exactly line up just right. Um, but these motors don't have threading inside of them. So they won't take the screws that came with it. Uh, and I didn't want to crack this open and tap it. So my solution uh, was to 3D print this guy here. Um, and then I eventually just wound up hot gluing it in place because I couldn't find anything better. And this, this worked, um, until the motors got so hot that it melted the hot glue, and then I added a fan and these heat sinks. Um, I'll take a, a short aside to talk about the encoder wheel. If you notice, I have the brass one here. Uh, this is the stock one. And, uh, if you notice, mine's got a little chip in it. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and this basically will happen to every single uh, G Logitech G-Series unit. I've cracked open G25s, G27s, and G29s. And it seems like the later style G29 actually uses a magnetic version of this, so it might not be an issue with the newer ones. So I'm going to hope the G923s, I haven't cracked one of those open, has a magnet version of it. In which case, a lot of this becomes a lot simpler, and you simply just kind of glue on the magnetic piece up here, and then just finagle the old one on top so it, it, it works out. Uh, but if your wheel is skipping, or as you play, uh, it your wheel is a little bit more and more off-center, and in some cases doesn't respond, this is generally the issue. And the only real solution is to pick up one of the brass ones, uh, I tried 3D printing these, but they're way too intricate to 3D print, so pick up a brass one. There's that. Um, so again, heat sinks are a must if you're doing this. These motors get pretty hot. I mean, the stock ones get hot too. I've seen people who mod. Uh, you can put in a separate, uh, pull off this power source and put a switch on it to put a fan on it. And that's all these really need. I, I played hours on this setup. Uh, what ultimately killed mine is... Uh, I just left the case open and had a, a regular house fan on it, and uh, I knocked over a screwdriver onto it and fried the board. So, I'm stupid. But, uh, up until this point, you're like, great, I just gotta find uh, some stuff, get someone who 3D prints, and I'm good to go, right? Well, so here, here's the main problem. Uh, these are the brass, brass gears, and that's what contacts this whole ring. Yeah, I know, I, I lubed mine way too much. Um, so this is what they talk about when they mean uh, gears are shearing. These are the gears that will shear. Uh, it tends not to because these brass uh, gears are uh, angled, chamfered, I don't know what the term is. So they, they go in there like that and they, they spin and turn. Um, so generally people say these break. I've never seen one. The internet says otherwise. Your mileage may vary. Uh, but if you do wind up having broken teeth, that just means that somewhere in the range it will uh, skip. But you can kind of tell it's a one-to-one -one with the entire wheel, so it'll be a specific spot in your rotation. Um, also note that this is directional right here, this piece. So when you put everything back together, make sure that this one is, I believe, flat on one end. But there's other tutorials on that one. So anyway, um, the pain in the ass part is this brass gear. Uh, I have not found a place that sells a replacement brass gear. I might be able to 
find someone who machines um, to get these brass gears, but you really want them to be brass. These are press fit. Uh, I don't think they have any uh, glues or anything on them. I think they're just press fit on. And uh, you, you're, you're going to try to take some screwdrivers and pry underneath that. And uh, I will tell you now, that doesn't work. Uh, it just won't. Uh, so what I actually usually wind up doing is taking an angle grinder and cutting it off and then using my automotive press finding some pin that fits that and slowly press it up. Um, I've tried, generally I torch them before I do it too. So propane torch, get them really nice and hot and, and press it out with a press. I've been able to kind of jig something. The problem is, is finding something thin enough to fit in there that's strong enough to take all that weight just not not possible. So I usually wind up having to cut them out a little bit. So uh, they're marred. This is one of the ones I didn't use because I marred it way more than I, I wanted to. Uh, and you can see on mine, they're actually a little bit shorter than the ones that are on the stock one just because I had to grind them down a little bit, which isn't really that big of a deal. It still makes full contact. They give you more than you need anyway. Um, but I think because I marred them a little bit, my wheel wound up making a little bit more uh, noise which I didn't really care, I've got noise cancelling headphones uh, so it's... I didn't really mind it too much, it was a little bit frustrating, I, I think I would like to uh, eventually, there, someone's got to be able to sell these, it, you can get the, the pitch off of them or like the rotations per millimeter or whatever the measurement is, and whatever um, so <clears throat> this is going to be the hardest part, everything else on this project is very easily doable this is the part that I I think that the average person without access to really special tools is not going to easily be able to do. And I think that covers most of the issues I've had. Uh, to go back to an earlier topic, I believe goes like that. And when you put everything back together, you slide this all the way to one side and you slide that guy think on this way it'll probably be like, like that. And then you try to match them up. Let me get that cord out of the way. Try to match it up something like that. And maybe it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah, like that. Um, I never was great at realigning these things, so uh, your mileage may vary. The last thing I'll say is um, I don't use a Logitech anymore. It's I have one for my son's rig. He's five. I didn't really need all that fancy stuff, but I upgraded to a Fanatec. Uh, not not an advertisement for Fanatec in the least. It's just eventually people want to move on to something else, and then you wind up with the issue of well, I want to keep my pedals and I want to keep my shifter for my Logitech unit, but I want to upgrade to a Fanatec or a SimCube or whatever the hell's out out there. Uh, and so the easy answer is, we'll just keep your old wheel plugged in and uh, use your other peripherals. Well, then you got to sit this thing on the side, and, and it, it's, a, it's a pain in the butt because it's big, and every time you boot it up, it, it wants to self-calibrate. So the simple solution to that is to unbolt the motherboard out of this thing and simply retain the plugs. This one is for, I believe, the pedals, and the other side is for the shifter to retain these things leave, you know, the power plugged into it, but disconnect uh, everything that goes to the wheel. So disconnect this guy, disconnect the two motor drivers, and just pull this out in like hot glue, duct tape it, 3D printed case, leave it dangling and live dangerously, ah, whatever. Um, but this way you can have your shifter and your pedals separate and take this whole thing out of this enclosure and you can just toss away the rest of this. Uh, that, to me, is probably the easiest way. They're, they sell um, special setups and stuff like this, but this is literally just zero dollar. Um, so, I believe that's basically everything I know about the, the G-Series uh, Logitech wheels. Uh, feel free, ask questions in the comments, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I have a Patreon, subscribing to YouTube helps, all sorts of stuff. Uh, if you have other videos you want me to go through and things you want me to try to poke and prod at, let me know. I'll see if I can get to them. Um, yeah, if I missed anything or something's wrong, feel free to tell me. Prove me wrong. 
and uh, cool beans. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention uh, these motors, the ones that are in the tutorial, I think double the amount of torque that the wheel puts out, which is a hell of a lot. Uh, it'll make everything go faster. It'll make the, the wheel feel completely different. Um, but as I've moved on to the Fanatec stuff, and, and I, my, mine's a Fanatec uh, CSL Elite, the, the belt drive one, not, not the direct drive. Um, the Fanatec unit is still leagues better. Uh, the difference is, is this is like, in theory, if you have all the, the parts for it, you know, a $40 affair and you've now upgraded everything. Um, so it's still not a replacement for a belt drive or direct drive. You, you probably still want to go for one of those in, in eventually. But if you're trying to get a little bit more mileage out of your existing Logitech, then this will work. Um, again, if you can find the motors, I'll see if I can find something. If someone's smarter than me, and knows how to search these schematic e websites to find a better motor, I'll give it a try. Um, uh, this Again, this one I have, I, I've burned the, the motherboard out of it, but if I can find another bo motherboard, I'm willing to guinea pig for the YouTubies and uh, see what I can find for you guys. So let me know what, what the internet finds, or I'll let you know what I find. Yeah, see how it goes. Thanks again, guys. Talk to you later.